What's going on wrestling family? Welcome back to the channel. It is time for me to react to your SmackDown hot takes. So if you want to be involved in the next video, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and pay attention to the community tab after SmackDown and after Raw, I will make a post that says, what is your hot takes for tonight's SmackDown and or Raw? And then I'll react to as many as I can in the next video. That's how you do it. Make sure you hit the notification button as well. Now, without further ado, let's get into the hot takes. Last night should have been the night that Waller turned on Theory. Yes, I agree 100%, bro. They are dragging this turn. This is going to be longer than One Piece and Wimbiana shin bones combined, bro. Like, they, I don't understand. The seeds have already been planted. One person got somebody punched by a professional boxer, and the seeds have been planted already, and it's grown. We got trees. We got fruits, bro. Let's go ahead and make this turn happen and let them get into a feud. I don't understand what the hesitation is because they're not getting those tag team championships off of uh, the Bloodline 2.0. We already know the Street Profits and either them or or Gargano Ciampa is going to take those titles away from the Bloodline 2.0. So we don't need Theory and Waller to still be together. Break them up. Have them have a feud. Integrate them into the mid card. Give them, give them more opponents for LA Knight. I think that would be great to see. And Austin Theory, if they book them properly, because I feel like they kind of feel them a little bit, they could actually make them into a big star. But I agree with you 100%. I don't understand. If you guys know why, let me know in the comment section, please. The new SmackDown theme song sucks and I don't like it. No me gusto. <laughs> he doesn't like the new theme song for SmackDown, and I appreciate your honesty. You have every right to have that opinion, and I will say this. For me, when it comes to this theme song with Megan Thee Stallion, if you didn't hear it, I think it's just okay. I, I like the beat. I think Megan Thee Stallion does pretty decent on the beat itself, but I feel like it would have been better suited as a theme song for Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair as a tag team. I think it would have been dope as their theme song, but as a SmackDown theme, I think it's just okay. Maybe Maybe it'll grow on me over time. I've only heard it one time, so I can't say. But as we stand now, I do like the previous version of the SmackDown theme song from Def Rebel, which is kind of crazy giving Def Rebel credit for making something better than somebody else. Um, their theme song for Nobody Better Than Me. Now, to be fair, for that theme song, when I first heard it, I thought it was basic until over time I went to some SmackDowns and I heard it on the big speakers, it changed my mind. I don't know why bass and songs make me change how I feel about a song, but it happens every single time. But I do like that theme as well. But either way, these two themes are are, are okay. They're okay. They, they will never probably be my favorites of all time. Obviously, CFO Dollar Sign had a great run when it came to theme songs for SmackDown. Even when we go to the OG SmackDown theme song, Jim Johnson, everybody on the ground, do you do, do you do? Like that, that theme song, I don't know what they're saying in that song, but that mug gets you hyped and it matched perfectly with the video. Even when they changed the intro video, it matched perfectly with that song. Or if you want to talk about Jim Johnson's Rise Up Volume 3 or Marilyn Manson's Beautiful People, I mean, there's so many different theme songs that I feel like are way better than the two that we got. But they have to cater to what's popular right now and use the artist that's popular now like they did in the past. So I, I'm not mad at them for this theme song. Again, maybe over time it'll grow on me. Maybe it won't. It is what it is. We can always use a skip button if it's really that much of a problem. But thank you so much for your submission. Cody saying that he's done with the bloodline and then randomly changing his mind for no reason with no explanation it was really dumb. Yeah, I agree with you, bro. When I watched this, I was like, what exactly is happening? I mean, Cody Rose, the Super Saiyan pastor, came backstage to Nick Aldis by himself without nobody asking. He said, hey, I don't know what you got going on with your day. I don't know what you're eating for dinner, but I just want to let you know I ain't signing no contract. I don't want nothing to do with the bloodline. And the guy is like, okay, that's cool. And then Roman Reigns later on in the night does the exact same thing. Nick Aldis, I don't need you. I don't need Cody Rhodes. And I ain't signing no contract. And then all of a sudden, at the end of the night, guess who's signing contracts? Both of these guys who wasted TV time telling us that they don't need to sign a contract. Makes no sense at all. Now, they got next week to explain it. Because I really believe on a weekly basis, SmackDown has a section on the script that says Cody Rhodes talks about something. So if they need Cody Rhodes to talk about something, that's something they're going to have him talk about. And we need Roman Reigns to explain why he signed the contract as well. Because even with them having that, 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 that fighting, between them and the bloodline 
I don't know why that convinced them to sign a contract. I don't know if the bloodline punched them in a section of their head to make them think like, okay, it makes sense to do it now. I don't know. But I'm with you. It makes no sense. But hopefully next week it will make sense. We'll see exactly what happened. The next question comes from my guy, Alex. What's up, Alex? He asks Roman Reigns and Cody team up to win the tag team titles off the bloodline. Ooh, this is going to be a rare moment where I just got to disagree with you on that because I don't, I don't want to see that happen i really don't i mean cody just had the tag team titles with jay uso recently and i know roman hasn't had the tag team titles in a while and i know both of them having the titles will make it some type of drama thing like that but for me as a big advocate for the tag team uh, division as a whole i would rather the bloodline lose those titles to an actual tag team whether it be diy or the street profits because you don't want those tag titles wrapped in the bloodline all the time bro you got to give an opportunity to other tag teams now if they want to pull the trigger on that in the next probably two to three years and try to reference their match that they're going to have at, at bad blood coming up then i'll be cool with that you know do a whole two-man power trip thing and that'll be an opportunity for cody rose to turn on roman in the future and then you'll see Roman as a face and Cody as a heel, and that'll be an interesting dynamic. But for right now, I I want titles to get away from factions when they can, especially when it comes to tag team titles. And yeah, I I, I wouldn't want to see this. But if it happens, hey, what can I do? Mom, can we get Ricky Starks to WWE? Mom, we already have a Ricky in WWE. The Ricky in WWE. <laughs> All right, bro. Listen, that's funny, but I won't tolerate no disrespect for Ricky, bro. I love Ricky. He was one of the highlights of the night. And that was funny, though. And the thing is, when he was walking down the ramp, I thought he was Adam Pearce at first. And I was like, what? Adam Pearce got back in the trunks? Because if you didn't know, he used to wrestle in Chicago. So I was like, what is going on? Until I start to see the fur on his body. And I'm like, wait, this guy is wearing a mink vest. Like, what? What is going on here? And then they explained that he was George the Animal Steel's kid. So I was like, okay, that explains why there's six inches of hair all over this man's body. And I thought that he was hilarious. One of you guys did say that he has the potential of being the new James Ellsworth. And that makes sense, you know, because I feel like when it came to when it comes to WWE, it's been a while since we had one of those guys whose sole purpose is to be a comedic element and not to be taken seriously as a wrestler and to enhance certain segments in WWE. It's been a while since we had somebody like that. And I think this would be a perfect time to kind of bring back that type of person. So for me, I'm a huge fan of Ricky already. I'm a fan of him already. Hopefully I can get his autograph or something like that. But man, Ricky is hilarious. And from what I understand, they're going to bring him back. So I know to some people it's going to be annoying because he's not somebody that we take seriously. But sometimes, you know, we got to, you know, try to do things to do things for the masses. All right. Everything can't be for the hardcore poor wrestling fans when it comes to wwe which the e is entertainment but yeah ricky's dope Meechin is awesome and i'm glad she won but that was a squash on piper niven the match lasted exactly 120 seconds and Meechin won clean that was fast even by wwe speed <laughs> speed standards <laughs> yeah i i don't i don't understand why they did that man like piper niven it made her and that's no disrespect to me, Chen, but Piper Niven, she's supposed to be this formidable threat. And she's a lot better in the ring than people give her credit for. I've been saying this for a while, even back in NXT UK, even before when she was um, when she was Viper in the Indies. She's great. Me, Chen, on the other end, great wrestler as well. I love her as Jade and TNA, even up to this point. I felt like this match here, especially since you had Chelsea Green there getting involved, it should have just ended in a DQ. Now, I'm not a person who's big on matches ending in DQ, but if you knew you didn't have enough time, which they did because they did go over but if they knew they didn't have enough time for this match end it in dq have chelsea green get involved get some heel heat for her and then move this match over to probably next week or the week after so they can have a full match for at least five minutes like that would have been great for the both of them to showcase how great they are and to continue this feud but i don't know why they did it the way they did it it just doesn't make any sense and this is what i say about smackdown's women uh women's division and i'm only talking about smackdown because we're talking about smackdown its brand if we're talking about raw then i got a whole different thing to say about them over there but i 100 percent agree with you man Melo should be the one to beat la knight for the u.s title hayes has been on the main roster for a while and things he's done like money in the bank and the andrade feud has been very impressive and that is because 
Melo is really good in the ring. He is impressive. Like, watch him back in NXT. He's done a fantastic... He always puts on a cling every time he steps in the ring. And the same can be said about Andrade Cianamis. He's really good in the ring. So either gentlemen, they're really great. I, I love the fact that they put these two in a match together and they put on that banger at SmackDown. Now, as far as how long Carmelo has been on the main roster, he's only been there for about probably four to five months because I think the draft was back in April. So I don't know if that's a reason to give him the title, but I will say this. I think what they're doing now is prepping him to take that title off of LA Knight. I know a lot of people were pretty upset about the fact that he lost against Andrade, but people have to understand that they're prepping him and building him up. So when that moment comes to where he takes that title off of LA Knight, it will make all the sense in the world. It will feel a lot more rewarding. I don't think that match against Cody Rhodes at the draft night and for him putting on that match with him was a mistake. That was WWE showing like, hey, this guy is talented. He's going to be our future star. We have to have him face against the champion to showcase who he is. Like you said, the money in the bank match, that's to showcase who he is, even though he didn't win that, that briefcase. I think when those things happen to guys like this, it's telling us like, hey, he's talented he's great but we're, we want to put the title on him at some point in time but it's just not right now so we're just going to keep him in on tv to keep reminding you guys that he exists that he's great in the ring until the moment that he does take that title off of la night and i wouldn't be surprised that if he wins that or when he does take that title off of la night if he doesn't turn into a full baby face at that point in time but anyway let me know what you guys think about that one the women's tag match next week is strange why not just have bailey versus naomi friendly competition to become the number number one contender and Nia can even interfere if they want leading to a triple threat match or have a winner for the singles match but the tag match is weird yeah I, I get where you're coming from I feel like the stipulation for this tag match is very very convoluted like if this person pins you on a Wednesday night when the sky is orange and it's 45 degrees outside with the wind slightly going to the southwest then you like it's, it's too much going on for this stipulation it's just over the top but I can kind of understand why they did this even though I don't 100% agree with it here's the thing for one, I think the reason why they're not going to have a friendly competition between not, between Bailey and uh, Naomi is because they probably don't want them to have any type of interaction or physical altercations in the ring until what I'm predicting Naomi is going to turn on Bailey. I think they want to save it until that point, so keep them on the same team until that happens, and they want to keep Tiffany Stratton floating around in the whole situation. The other thing is they come up with this convoluted um, these stipulations here. It's because I feel like this is Triple H's brand when it comes to certain matches. Now, a lot of the times it makes a lot of sense and it's really worked. But what he's always been doing or seemed to be doing a lot is to create these matches in situations where it can go either way. There's so many different ways these things can happen. What can happen? This conversation can happen. Everybody's predictions is different. And I do appreciate him for doing that to make things not seem as predictable um, as they are in other situations. There's times that they are very predictable. But the problem with this is that you paint yourself in the corner because we know that Nia Jax is going to have a title match at Bad Blood. So, which means that Bailey and Naomi, their team is not losing. Now, the only question is, and we know they're going to pin Tiffany Stratton because neither one of them are going to pin Nia Jax, who's the champion. It doesn't make any sense at all. Who's going to pin Tiffany Stratton? Is it going to be Bailey? Is it going to be Naomi? Or is it going to be both of them creating the triple threat match that you're asking for right here? That's the only question when it comes to this match. And I think this is a symptom of what's wrong with the women's division on SmackDown so far. Not that it's terrible, but the problem is we have way too many heels, bro. We got too many people mad in that locker room. What kind of water are they drinking, bro? We got like three faces on the roster, which is Bailey, Naomi, and Tiffany Stratton. And I, I'm not going to include uh, Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill, although they are technically on the SmackDown roster, but they're tag team champions, so they're kind of floating around. But outside of those three, everybody else is a heel. Right. So that's why no one else is really getting a, a chance. So until a face takes that title or a heel turns face, we're going to get the same people in Bailey and Naomi. Naomi's going to get involved in stuff that has nothing to do with her. Then she's going to disappear and glow somewhere, then come back. And that's no disrespect to her. I feel like that that's what they've been doing with her. You guys know I love Naomi. I was happy when she went to TNA, but it feels like that's going that's the case. And with Bailey, it's just kind of like she's just kind of lingering around ever since she lost her title. And it's like, why is she involved in this? Everyone else that has has, that could have an opportunity they're all heels Candice LeRae could have an opportunity Andy Hartwell could have an opportunity I don't know what the hell the Tegan Knox is but she can have an opportunity but everyone else are heels so it's just like what's next right me and Yum had to match on the Smackdown premiere against Piper Niven which is great they're finally building her up in a way where I feel like they should have but 
I don't think she's really going to get that title match anytime soon. And if they give it to her anytime soon, she's not winning that match. Uh, you know, Nia Jax is not losing that title until she drops it to Tiffany Stratton. And that's just the way it is. But I agree with you. Sorry for the long rendered response. I appreciate your submission. Thank you. Cody shouldn't be in the tag match. They should have kept it in the family by having Jimmy participate instead. Now, I agree with you partially. OK, I agree. I know we're all excited about the return of Jimmy Uso. We feel like that he should come back and be involved. But here's the thing. I, I view this match in layers. I don't like or understand the idea of this match, but I do understand why they did it. And I understand why it's needed if they do exactly what they, I think they're going to do. Now, as far as why I don't like it, it's because... Listen, I know it's a big money match and it's great for Atlanta. I'm not saying I don't want the match to happen, but this is the reason why I don't really like the idea of it. For one, since WrestleMania, WWE feels like that they've been really trigger happy when it comes to involving their champion in tag team matches. Now, it's fine here and there, but at least for Cody, it's been happening a couple of times. I know he wasn't champion at, at WrestleMania. I get that. But just the idea of having a champion in a tag team match over and over, we've seen it happen at Money in the Bank. We got it now at Bad Blood. I get it's not that often, but I feel like when you do that, in a sense, it feels like you're kind of protecting the champion, like you're scared of him being by himself. And not only that, you guys know i'm a tag team advocate it takes away a slot for an actual tag team to have a match to defend their titles now i don't know the full card of blood blood but it seems like that we're not going to really get a tag match theory either as well because yeah i just don't feel like it's going to happen that's just me but i could be wrong um but when you do that especially with cody rhodes it feels like you don't trust in his title reign and you're admitting that we don't have enough for him to do and you got the bloodline storyline happening here that's picking up more momentum with what one of the if not the biggest stars in wwe in roman reigns one of the if not the biggest rising star in wwe in jacob fatu they are taking up all the momentum and it feels like wwe is afraid that if cody rose does something that does not involve the bloodline they're gonna the bloodline is gonna pick up so much momentum and our champion is gonna suffer because he's gonna get devalued as time goes on because no one's going to focus on the supposed star of this brand so what do they do they take him and they get him involved in this bloodline storyline and i feel like they're doing this to kind of keep the momentum around him until randy orton turns and i feel like at that point they will feel comfortable with uh cody rhodes going to do something without the bloodline because they feel like that feud can pull a, a lot of momentum and be a big money match to where that feud and the bloodline thing can happen at the same time but for right now i feel like they're protecting them the other thing is I feel like that I get that it's a big money match and it got your champion involved in it, but it just feels like that Cody really have no real importance in this match. Like everyone else has a reason to be there for the most part, but not Cody. Outside of just the can they coexist storyline or the gimmick that Vince McMahon talks about all the time between him and Roman Reigns. Outside of that, I don't see any reason for him to be there. He doesn't have a, a, a beef with Jacob Fatu, and I don't know if they're going to build up a match between him, Jacob Fatu in the future. That could possibly be the case, but he doesn't have a beef with him as we're talking about. He already beat Solo Sokoa twice in the ring clean, so there's no reason for us to even care about what happens between those two, and him and Roman's on the same team, so the only thing is, like, will Roman turn on Cody? We know Cody's a good, upstanding citizen, uh, the Super Saiyan pastor, as I call him. He's not going to do anything uh, crazy in the ring to roman reigns i don't feel like that's going to be the case but outside of that drama it's like why should we really care about his involvement in this match and i love cody rhodes this is no disrespect to him i just feel like that's going to be the case and the same could be said for solo sakura he already lost to cody twice so why should we care outside of the fact that roman could beat possibly beat him up because of what he's been doing so far and the possibility of what he can do as far as showing his jealousy towards jacob fatu in this match that's the only reasons why but i feel like he has more of a reason to be in this match than cody rhodes does Roman Reigns has tons of reasons. He, we, like I said, he has the can eggs all exist. You got Solo Sokoa where you know he's upset with solo for what he did and for you know him and jacob fatu that's the match that everybody wants to see in the future so to get some type of sample size of that potential match in the future that's huge and the same can go for jacob fatu he's in a ring with the champion he's in a ring with roman reigns one of the if the biggest stars in the ring so I don't see why Cody needs to be in this match at all, but I understand from a money standpoint that this is a money match. They want to give a big match to Atlanta that it has to happen that way. And I'm sorry, I'm going off topic as far as Jimmy Uso, but I think if Jimmy Uso and Jay Uso comes out and fights off 
Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa. Like if they have it to where Jay Uso some or Jimmy Uso, I'm sorry, comes out to help as the Bloodline 2.0 is jumping Cody Rhodes and and Re um, Roman Reigns at the same time. If, if, J if Jimmy comes out to help and eventually he gets attacked and then Jay comes out for the sole reason to help out his brother, then I think that would make sense. And then we could have it where Jay Uso isn't really a part of the Bloodline, but he's just kind of pseudo a part of it to be involved in that Survivor Series match and then he can get out of it to because he says, hey, I'm doing this for my brother. I don't have any respect for uh, Roman Reigns at all or anything like that. This is solely for Jimmy and that's about it. And I think they can play that type of storyline when it comes to that. And I think that will happen. I don't think Jimmy needed to come back on SmackDown this past week. But anyway, sorry that I'm long winded. That's just my thoughts about that whole thing. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. So that pretty much wraps up my hot takes for this week's SmackDown. Thank you guys so much for participating. If I didn't get to your hot take, I apologize. More than likely, it could be that other people had the same hot take. So I figured I would hit more birds with one stone or I just didn't have enough time. But again, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. I hope you guys are having a great day. Happy Football Sunday. Let me know what your teams are in the comment section. I appreciate you. Salute. Peace. Have a good day.